So what, what makes Machines Technology Platform unique? What makes our technology platform unique is the way we built it. Uh, it was important to get to market quickly, it was important to have a low cost platform, and it was also equally important to be highly flexible in our ability to adapt to different business models as we move into space. So I had a white space and I said, you know what, we should build a federated cloud. We should not build anything that already exists. So we went about connecting up to other systems like tax. Tax in the U.S. is very complex. We don't need to, to build tax, we'll use a tax system. ADP, we used uh, Digital River for payment gateway. We used a hosted BSS system. And at the bottom here, we connected into carriers. So this is our, our network elements. And here we connected into carriers. And on top of this, we built a stack. And it's a special stack that makes us very unique. And this stack allows us to create services that allow you to just buy a service for, for things like Outlook or uh, for Amazon uh, in order to just get at particular apps on the internet. And so with this stack, we can now define even what roaming means, or maybe roaming means nothing. Maybe it's by country. Maybe we can say you can use Outlook in the US and Outlook in the UK. Or we can say you can use Outlook everywhere in the world. We can begin to set all the flexibility we need with this particular stack. The other unique thing we did in order to, to, uh, to reduce costs is we built all this in the cloud. So we used the Amazon EC2 environment as well as Terramark hosting in order to create this environment in a low cost, scalable way. So as we need new instances, as we begin to scale, we can just fire up another instance of what we need. Can you talk more specifically about what the system is built in, in terms of what code and, and a little bit more about the BSS or no OSS uh, interaction? Yeah, so uh, we, we have a set of APIs that we use in order to talk to the BSS components. The BSS components we use is very lightweight. We use the billing components, we use the invoicing com components. We have our own email component here that we use a third party for email, creation of uh, flexible emails. Um, we use it to, um, to uh, dump our call records into in order to do settlement with carriers. But all the real logic about the rate plans and what's offered on the page of what the end user can see or what the enterprise can see are all done and managed within the stack. Walk me through the, the um, implementation process with a customer on one hand and a carrier on the other hand. Okay, very good. So what we do today is, um, with a carrier, we have a project plan. The project plan defines all the steps. Uh, it, it says that uh, first we're going to have a, a, an API that we connect into provisioning. And then we're going to have a connection into your GGSN. And then we're going to put all this together into a project plan that takes roughly three to six months, depending on the ability for the carrier to apply resources. We bring this up, and now we have an interconnect where we have a service in the countries that are allowed on this particular operator. In the, so this is a carrier interconnect. When we talk to an enterprise, we provide a set of tools to the enterprise, which is unique. Uh, you're not going to find tools like this out here by any other carriers in the business. What we have is an enterprise portal, and in this enterprise portal, IT, who loves to control costs, who loves to control who gets what, who needs to know who has what, so when somebody leaves or is added, they know exactly who's got it. Uh, with this portal, they can enter the users and their email addresses, and they can assign service. So they can say, uh, this person will get $50 as a limit that they can spend on mobile broadband in a month. Or they can say, when they're roaming, they can have um, Outlook. And at the end of this period of a month, 
we create a bill and we send the bill to the admin who is managing this portal. This kind of policy control is really, really important in the IT world where costs are so, are so important to manage and there are actually, you know, uh, their objectives are based on their ability to manage those, those amounts of money. I can tell you I've heard time and time again from IT professionals that they have no idea how Wi-Fi is being purchased. Who's buying it? You know, uh, how do they get a control on it? Um, how do they know by department who needs what? This tool allows them to not only have manage it by email, but also by department. So you can begin to split off the bill and actually do a chargeback into the billing organizations. But from one console, you can see who has mobile broadband, where it is, what they are available to use, and also get the bill in one uh, once a month. Perfect.